Meet Carlin Kolker, the personal health guru behind Kristap Sport Sinus. Sometimes, doctor. Carlin Kolker says he ponders genuflecting in front of the squat rack. That's his word, to genuflecting. I approach it with a religious fervor, he says. He's kidding. But also he isn't. A quasi-beatific and yet winking grin spreads then fades. Kolker 52, Dand, bursting with optimism and immaculately bald is the founder and medical director of Peak Wellness, a healthcare and wellness facility in Greenwich, Connecticut. A former competitive bodybuilder, power lifter, and mixed martial arts fighter turned MD, Fagn, nutritionist, author, diet inventor, and personal trainer to stars and non-stars alike, Kolker's frame is bursting with comic book-sized muscles. He looks like the actual peak of wellness. Seated in an examination room, he downshifts into a serious unpacking of the careful mechanics of the squat and why it's central to the strength and conditioning sessions he's conducted with his prized client, the New York Knicks burgeoning star, Kristaps Porzingis. They've worked hand in glove starting at the end of last season, and Kolker traveled all the way to Latvia this summer to train Portsinus while he was playing for the national team. The relationship continues to this day. Even if they can't carve out time to meet, Kolker says they talk frequently and get together at least once a week. Port Sinus is the latest in a string of celebrity clients for Kolker, and the workout room at Peak Wellness bears witness to the span of his career. Movie posters featuring stars who Kolker has helped get buff and game-worn jerseys adorn the white and taupe walls. There are MMA gloves worn by ex-champs, a racket used by Andre Agassi when he won the French Open, and on a plexiglass encased pedestal, an autographed pair of Shaquille O'Neal size 22 sneakers. Kolker co-starred with Shaq on a short-lived reality TV show fighting childhood obesity. Still. Why would Port Sinus, who has the full attention and resources of a billion-dollar franchise invested in his well-being, turn to his very own personal, non-team affiliated guru? Especially one who, like Kalker, has performed studies at the behest of ephedra-based supplement manufacturers, a substance banned by every major sporting body has been named in multiple lawsuits, and once found himself in the middle of a scandal involving Jeremy Piven, Sushi, and a Broadway revival of a David Mamet production? If you spend a little time with Kolker, it's easy to see why Portsinus might believe in him and his workout regimen. Spend a little more, and you might believe too. The reason Portsinus sought help outside the Knicks organization is fairly obvious. Portsinus has dealt with New York's near constant turmoil in its coaching and front office ranks since he was drafted in 2015. 
The relationship seemed to reach its nadir after he ditched what would turn out to be his final exit interview with Phil Jackson, reportedly in response to yet another cycle of Nixon chaos and dysfunction. Meanwhile, Jackson pondered trade offers leading up to the 2017 NBA draft. After Jackson was summarily canned, Portsinus still spent part of the offseason dodging text messages from his head coach. Further, the chief concern pre-draft regarding Portsinus was whether his spindly frame would be able to withstand the rigors of an NBA season or if he'd get tossed around like a sublimely skilled version of a wacky inflatable tube man. As Jackson himself fretted in August 2015, unless Portsinus developed the necessary core strength, maybe he'd peek at Sean Bradley 20. Then there are the nagging injuries that had caused Portsings to miss 10 and then 17 games over the past two seasons. All of this meant Portsinus needed to get stronger. And that's how, with a helpful assist from his brother-slash-agent, Janice, he wound up at Kolker's store. In a short amount of time, like Justin Bieber, who called Kolker a genius, Portsinus has completely bought in. In a recent interview with the New York Daily News, Portsinus positively gushed, Kolker knows what I need all the time when I'm tired, when I'm not, whenever. When a lingering shoulder injury healed shortly after they began working together, it was all the proof Portsinus needed, I gained so much trust in him, he said. According to Kolker, the goal wasn't just to untangle the ongoing health issues, but to create a stronger foundation and a more powerful core. What he does, Kolker said, is to make their bodies better, stronger, more flexible, balanced. More rugged, if you will. The prescription was lots of Kolker's prized squats. The squat to me, is the single most valuable thing I do for my athletes, and for myself, Kolker said. In June and July, Portsinus would post brief clips of his time in the gym with Kolker, where he could be seen grinding through a set or two of squats. Kolker explains that when working with a client, he'll often start unburdened and then slowly begin to add weight to ensure that the proper technique is locked in, a process that is carefully monitored and supervised. The other key factor is rest. The grind of an 82-game NBA regular season makes it a difficult mandate to enforce, even without the extended slog through the playoffs. It's a beating the body takes, Kolker said. I'm very big on rest. Some of the results are plainly evident. Portsinus's increased strength has unleashed his most obvious advantage, he's really, really tall and can still get off a good shot over a defender that's draped all over him. December and January swoon notwithstanding. Portsinus is far surpassing the inconsistent glimpses of unicorn-like dominance he displayed in his first two seasons. Kolker says that yes, some trainers have questioned the value of squats, 
but he remains er confident that he possesses both the skills and commitment to safety to make it work for him. He told the Daily News that others have scoffed at his unique methods, because they can't stand someone who won't tow the party line. When one lone beast raises his head to take stock of a situation, turns and goes a different direction, it draws the ire of the herd, Kolker told the paper. But are his methods actually all that controversial? I spoke with three strength and conditioning professionals, showing them the brief clips that Portsonis had made public and sharing the contents of the Daily News article. They all stressed that it was impossible to make a complete assessment without a first-hand look at what Kolker was doing. Still, while some said they'd go about training Port Sinus in a different way than Kolker, nothing they saw in the videos looked like it was contraindicated or in any way damaging to Port Sinus. Mike Fantigrassi, the director of services for the National Academy of Sports Medicine, said that when it comes to weight training and exercise, all reputable and qualified trainers are working within the same basic principles. The reality is that with weight training and exercise, there is really nothing that Tenone's discovered at his point that someone hasn't tried or done before, he said. I sincerely doubt that there's something that, Kolkaras doing that no one else is doing out there, 